Welcome to this 30-minute webinar about healthy lunches. I'm Greg Christian, founder of the Organic School Project, which has been in existence for six years trying to change the way we feed kids in school. I've been a chef for 30 years, working on the stoves for 25, and I'm with Jerry Herbick, who's been around the kitchens a little longer than I have. He's, he has experience in everything from fine dining to institutional food. His last job before coming to the Organic School Project was with Chartwells as a regional chef of Chicago Public Schools. Also on the line is Colleen Kelly, who works for OSP. She's going to be taking your questions. You can send questions in any time. Finally, we have Beth Sindler from FWE, our sponsor for the webinar series on the line. She's here to answer any equipment questions. Since founding uh, OSP in 2005, we've believed from the beginning that kids have to grow food on school grounds or near their school. They have to be getting their hands into the soil. So we've put 10 vegetable gardens into, into Chicago area schools, mostly Chicago public schools. And we think that kids need to learn about food all year, not just nutrition week. So we've taught wellness education for three years in three schools. And we fed over 225,000 healthy meals as a subcontractor to Chartwells in Chicago Public Schools. So this Grow, Teach, Feed mantra is what we live by. And recently we finished a Grow, Teach, Feed collection. These are three books that uh, where we've cooked six years of our experience into these three books. The Grow book teaches people, schools, how to put vegetable gardens in their schools and it has curriculum for one first through eighth grade. And I'm going to get Jerry talking right up front here. Jerry, what do you think about kids growing food? Well, I saw it at the, at the schools that you had some of the gardens in, and it was interesting to see that the uh, students took more of a, a, a part of, of the food. And the example, <clears throat> radishes and carrots just didn't grow in plastic bags. They, they saw where it came from, and, and even the spices. And do you have a garden at home? I've been out gardening in my backyard for 41 years. Do your, any of your kids or grandkids garden? Well, it's funny. This year I've got uh, two grandkids that are just under three years old, and we're putting in radishes this year and uh, some of the spices, and they're, they're having fun, and I can't wait for the things to, to grow so they can pick it. I think as kids grow food, they reconnect with their food source, and they'll be more apt to eating healthier foods and trying different foods. The teach volume is over 25 lessons for first through eighth grades, all about food and nutrition, food in the environment, food in their body, food and advertising. And the feed volume, which is why you're on this webinar today, is over 200 recipes with how to make local, uh, how, how to make fresher food from scratch, how to get local food bought and into those recipes. And there's nutritionals in all those recipes. And we're going to talk today about our current food system and its impact on the environment and health, why healthy cooking is needed in school. We're going to look at three lunches, and we're going to talk about getting local food in there. And remember, send in questions anytime. We'll get them answered. First, we're going to talk about food miles and how food gets to your cafeteria and onto the kids' plate from the farm. We have farms around this country and the world that food ends up going to manufacturing or it gets packaged. There's international distribution and a port of entry when it comes from out of the country. Uh, if it's American grown or raised, it goes from manufacturing, packaging right to domestic distribution, to regional distribution into your school, onto the plate, and then there's garbage if you're not recycling and composting, ends up in a landfill, sometimes burned. The average ingredient travels 1,500 miles before it reaches the table. So if you have a can of soup that you're serving and there's 10 ingredients in that soup, the miles, the average miles on that can of soup is 15,000 miles. We're shipping food around America, around the world, and what I'm asserting is that that's not going to continue to happen simply because we're running out of oil. Uh, our typical meals at home have food on our plate from five different countries. That's from the Leopold Center, which is in Iowa. We're overfishing. 
25% of the seafood caught is discarded as bycatch. That means that when you're catching a certain kind of fish, you catch a different fish that you didn't mean to catch. Those fish almost all die and aren't eaten. And we have a huge bycatch problem in the world. And then a lot of our agricultural um, processes use fertilizers that create dead zones in the water. We talked last week about the dead zone in the Gulf of um, Mexico that's over 8,000 square miles. That's the biggest dead zone. Comes down the Mississippi. All the chemicals that we use in our farming gets from 33 states, drain into the Mississippi, ends up in the Gulf of Mexico. There's 150 dead zones like that around the world where no fish live and no uh, water plant life lives. Another reason why you want to do healthier food in school and head towards what I'm saying is that we start with local food heading towards sustainable foods, ending at organic food down the road with a plan to not just serve healthier food, but to reduce the environmental impact, the carbon footprint of the food we're serving. So we want to use less fossil fuels in our food. We want to use less water. The current way we raise our animals in America, um, a kilogram of beef uses 15,000 liters of water. We're simply going to run out of water. We can't keep farming the way we do and sustainable farms promote biodiversity. I know monocropping has been popular for 60 years now and it's uh, many say it's really hard on the environment and it's chemically intensive. And we want to promote healthier uh, consumerism. We want to support our local economy. One way to do that is to buy local food, local vegetables, local meat and keep those dollars circulating in town. This is an example of a local farm that I've done business with for years. Vicky's pictured there. She's about 70 miles away from Chicago in St. Anne. She's not using chemical, chemicals. She's organic. She does wholesale pricing. You know, does she have food available all year? No. Can she feed all the schools in Chicagoland? No way. But this is an example of somebody, and there's a whole lot of Vicky's out there more and more, that want to get their food into schools and hopefully you're all trying to figure out how to get more local food. I know it costs more today, but there's people doing it around America, getting that food into kids' mouths. Everybody wins when you do that. And of course, the reason that everybody understands about getting healthier food into kids' lunches is because we're big, getting bigger in America. We're diabetic, we're asthmatic, and that's getting worse. It's all an epidemic, those three illnesses. And this is from the CDC. As you can see, we're. In, this is the last time they've done this. 2008. We're, we're 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 obese, getting bigger. It's a struggle for everybody. For a long time, it's been said that this is the parents' problem. I agree, the parents should be responsible for this, but that argument isn't working for us. We need to. Uh, attack this in the schools too. And now we're going to take a quick poll. Uh, we do this every webinar, a quick two question poll and then there's a questionnaire at the end that we'd love you to fill out. We want to serve you better. We uh, are paying attention to the poll answers and the questionnaire answers to devise more webinars, more education for you folks who have a really hard job of feeding kids on a really slim budget with little labor. Um, and this question has to do with vegetable gardens. Do you have a vegetable garden in your school? Do you want more information on vegetable gardening? We aren't going to talk about vegetable gardening, for example, if everyone has a garden and doesn't want more information about it. So if you would just take a second uh, to fill that out, I can't reiterate enough. You want to get kids to eat healthier food, you need they need to be gardening. And thanks for taking this poll. 67% of you said you have a vegetable garden, 33% said no, and half of you want more information on vegetable gardening. So thanks a lot. Uh, if you can, get your staff in that vegetable garden. It's not just for teachers, parents, and kids. The more you can connect your staff with where their food comes from or with the planet, uh, what I noticed in, in some of the food businesses I've owned is that as my cooks connect more with where their food comes from, more with farms, the food got better. They took more pride in their food. 
So now we're going to talk about food. Our first recipe is chicken cacciatore, nutritionals and costs. Jerry, it's time for you to start helping me here. 